Okay, uh, we're live. All right, hey everybody. Um, welcome back to uh, the third Bay Threat. It's awesome. Thanks for having me out. Um, so if you saw the last talk, I was kind of, kind of bummed because Valerie used a lot of my slides. But, um, but in a different way, no, it was perfect because her talk was very much about how the testing works and um, <clears throat> what are the things that work that get you in. And my talk's different. Uh, my talk's what does not work. And I learned this the hard way. Um, so it's a nice little bookend. Anyway, um, let's do this. So obligatory slides. Um, I'm not here speaking on behalf of my employer. Um, so all the mistakes that I made are, are hopefully going to stay my own and not be yours too. Uh, but that said, don't try this at home, blah, blah, blah. Um, so about me, uh, I hang out with the guys in the orange camel pants. At, uh, yeah, what's up, 949 at Duff Con. Um, I am a tester of pens. I'm a pen tester. Really big show, really big. Um, I do a lot of network pen testing, social and physical. Uh, no, not like that. Um, so, so like, why am I here, right? Like, why are you listening to me right now? And it's basically to make fun of myself, um, you know, and hopefully to educate. I'm hopefully, hoping that you're gonna get something out of it. So. If you really want to be a badass red team tester, you know, like James Bond style, this is not that talk. Um, I can't help you because I'm not a badass. Not yet. I mean, I'm working on it all the time. Uh, these, this is a list that, oh good, it showed up, of people that are badasses. And if you want to learn, seriously, follow these people. There's, there's too many to list, but uh, this, is a, this is a good place to start. Um, but if you want to not be an ass, then you're in the right place, okay? Because everything I thought I knew, my preconceived ideas about what it would be like to be on the red team, uh, I was pretty much all wrong, for the most part, with, with some good exceptions, okay? So real quick, you know, yeah, no, you just saw the last talk, so I, I will be short on this. What is red team testing? Essentially, it is a full scope penetration test, uh, as opposed to, you know, with a clearly defined set of targets, as opposed to general exposure, general analysis of uh, the vulnerability of an organization. So is this, in, generally speaking, it's very targeted. You're going after, usually it's one thing, and that might be a uh, core business asset, something that the company values. It may or may not include domain administrator. It doesn't matter if you get DA, if you end up getting the data that you're looking for. Uh, red team services tend to be very adversarial. Ultimately, after you've actually had a penetration test, uh, and you've already gone through and mitigated and remediated and made sure, okay, like we did it, let's, let's do it for real this time. Um, so basically, uh, if you've already had one, then you're a good candidate. If you haven't had an actual penetration test or an assessment or a vulnerability scan, stop, back up, do those things first, come back when you're ready, if you're ready to really test it out. Um, so my first rookie mistake, and I made it a lot, was overpacking, um, you know, through everything in the suitcase that I, pot I thought I could possibly need, um, which, you know, Basically, I brought everything <laughs> and ended up using almost none of it. Um, very, very little of it, right? And so I'm paying for this check bags. I literally had my clothes in my backpack and a double wide roller luggage bag filled to the brim with all this shit that I didn't need. Basically, every time you fly with it, you're gonna break it. So that made me a sad hacker. Um, but what I do bring now is a couple things. I always make sure I have the flashlight, the binoculars, the camera, the phone, uh, and some sear picks. These are like my go-to picks usually. If I can't open them with this, I need to try something else, uh, a different way into the building. So I'm a big fan of those. Uh, I always bring duct tape, because duct tape will save your ass. Um, and I bring Angry Birds or something to you know, keep myself entertained when I'm in the hotel room waiting for 2 a.m. to roll around. Uh, disposable gloves are important, and we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Uh, I, but whatever, whatever possible, you could probably buy it there. All right, some things like I buy a 500 pack of gloves, you take them with you, whatever, bring them back. But for the most part, you can get everything you need and don't have to deal with TSA, which is always nice. Uh, Walmart's your friend. They're all over the place. A lot of them are 24 hours. There's a good joint. Home Depot, uh, you saw Valerie slides with the coat hangers and various other under the door type tools that you can use to get into a building. Know where your Home Depot is. Uh, and then possibly most importantly is a, a thrift store because a lot of the times the people who gain access to a building unfettered uh, are uh, utility workers or you know, like a gas meter guy. You know, the uh, thrift store is gonna have these, uh, these clothing. Uh, so this is from a recent engagement I did. There was a Goodwill down the street. That's about $4 that I'm holding right there, just all of it. Uh, this hat, I don't know if you can see it. No duck face. It's no duck face, sorry. Um, but there is a baby in the corner, you can't see, anyway. Uh, 
So this hat, this is actually like some sort of like NASCAR race for the cure hat. I don't know, but it had a little propeller hat. It looked like it was some fucking like FedEx clone. So I went the courier route, the laptop bag. Uh, basically, I ended up spending a couple bucks and rocked the shop. I mean, you just go in there. So like, this is a nice alternative to some other more advanced technology that I thought that would be a really big deal. I thought I would need based on movies and TV shows and shit. Um, don't believe the hype. Well, no, I mean, there's, there's a time and a place for everything. It's called college. Um, so the Conmic Caper, I basically had a Proxmark 3. And I'm really super excited about it because I'm like, fuck yeah, I will get into any building with a Proxmark 3. Well, it's interesting. Uh, it's expensive. So this is about $460 a piece of kit. Um, but you have to get really, really close. Like the antenna read range is about an inch and a half. So uh, there's two places where people typically wear their badges. One's here. And one's here, on the hips. So um, with the condiment caper, I had it and I'm walking around and I got lucky because the, the client had a deli in the lobby of the company. And it was one of those like little corner units that like forced the queue to wrap around and everybody was standing really tight around lunchtime. And there was one mark, as a woman, she had the badge on her hip on the right side and she was standing next to the condiment counter and there was uh, mustard and ketchup and uh, a napkin dispenser and shit. And I'm just like, okay, perfect, she's busy. I'm gonna just reach forward and I leaned forward and I boop, touched her without her permission, um, you know, almost. She snaps her head around and she looks at me and she gives me this look like, what the fuck are you doing? And I like, napkins? And I pointed to this like bulk thing of napkins that were down there in plastic in the bottom, like, you know, that I was reaching towards. And she goes, it ah. points to the napkin dispenser. And I'm just like, ah, oh, fuck. All right, whatever, my bad. Uh, totally worth it though. <laughs> Right? Okay, I got it. I finally got it. So, uh, yeah. There's a little four-wire USB-style cable, and it was running up my sleeve and down the side into my pockets, and I was like, fuck yeah, James Bond. And you, when I reached forward to grab it, it, boop, yanked it. So I, like, I get back to the car, and I'm super excited, and I look, and it's still in read mode because it didn't get anything because the antenna came unplugged. I was not happy. Uh, I'm... So what, it, what, what was even better though, and what I should have done, what I've done since then, is I spend some time on Flickr. And if you're hanging out in the lobby of the company, you've got time, right? Uh, so you go to Flickr, and I like to look for pictures of corporate barbecues, because there are people at the office, middle of the day, wearing their badges. And so you get a little something like this. Uh, on the right are actual badge photos that I found on Flickr. Yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? It does look like GDE. Uh, and on the left, that's Microsoft Excel. I made a little spreadsheet. I took a picture of myself on my iPhone and, you know, went down to Kinko's and for 50 cents made my own badge. So then I got on my phone and pretending to talk. I've got my 50 cent badge and I've got raviolis from 7-Eleven in my back, in my other hand, because uh, my hotel room doesn't have a microwave. So hands full, walk up, they look at you, they look down, they look at the badge, you know, like this, this close, they look down, they go, open the door for you. No problem, so 50 cents versus 560. Um, good deal, I recommend it. So then I got into the elevator, right? Okay, walk past the guards, cool, go into the elevator, I'm like, yes, elevator's right outside the guard station, I'm done, I'm in. Push the button, nothing happens. And then I see the RFID badge reader beneath the elevator buttons. So not only do you need a badge to get into the elevator, you need a badge to make it go anywhere. So that's where Angry Birds comes in. Uh, because I sure as hell wasn't gonna go back out past the guard and like try to cover up why, why are they gonna give me a second look now? Um, eventually, somebody called a floor and I'm like, oh, where am I going? And it ended up going to the third floor and it ended up working out very well for me. Uh, there's the, a similarity of the, uh, of the badge thing. So another rookie mistake that I made a lot was not sleeping. And it's like when you're a new parent and you, you, know, you get home from the hospital and you just can't fucking sleep and you're so tired, but you want to look at the baby because she's adorable. Or like, if I just fixed that one more exploit, made sure it like one more encoding, like get it past the antivirus, you're not sleeping. Uh, and when you're sleep deprived and you're hanging out in the middle of the night uh, and you're really basically about to fall asleep, uh, shit gets weird. Uh, and you start to, I don't know, kind of hallucinate a little bit. Um, so I'm on this gig, and uh, I'm, I'm lookout for my boss, uh, who's, who's running around and, and doing his thing, and I hear footsteps behind me, and I freeze, and I'm like, no, those are the real footsteps, so I'm not imagining this. And I'm like, well, I'm gonna be busted, I'm gonna be kicked in the face, 
and it sure as hell isn't my boss, because I know he's that way, running around doing stuff. Uh, and I turn around, it's this huge buck, this big deer, not this one, that, that's not my photo, that's Google. But, um, so I'm like, oh, we have this moment, like in season two of The Walking Dead, where they like pet the deer before, uh, I'm not gonna spoil that. Um, see it. Uh, so I, I, I look back at the deer, I'm like, okay, everything's fine. I look back to where I'm supposed to be looking, and then I'm like, wait, those lights weren't on a minute ago, right? And so I texted my boss, I'm like, we had like a, a safety word, uh, it was bananas, to, um, to, to bail, right? And he, uh, he's like, I'm like, dude, this isn't a bail, but I'm pretty sure those lights weren't on. And so I went back to the rental car and I like laid down and uh, after a couple minutes goes by and he's still not back and I look, poke my head up and there he is fucking bolting over the hillside, running as fast as he can, ghost white, and I see the uh, security cars that are now you know, chasing us off the facility. Now, I would, I would point out that detected is not caught. We were not caught. They knew we were there, but that's what I tell myself. Um, so this is an important lesson that I still struggle with. It sounds like a really good deal, when, like when you need coffee, you need to get out of there. And then, because you, you end up going to, to McDonald's later because they're open late, uh, and it's, you know, it's the middle of the night, and you're about to break into the building, and you're frustrated, and you're picking, and you're on tilt, and you can't get the thing open. And then, it'll be fine, just keep going, all right? So new plan, all right, okay, I gotta go. I, I, I gotta go. So, uh, get the garbage, you know, real quick, go through it, like make a point of it before going back to the hotel room. Well, um, that didn't really work out for me because those gloves that I said you need to bring, I didn't bring them. I messed up and left them at the hotel room on the other side of town. Um, yeah, so that was a problem. And my flashlight, well, that wasn't there either. So the new new plan was to get the garbage bags, put them in the back of the rental car, drive back to the, rental, to the hotel, and, and then do it there uh, with my gear after I helped myself out. Well, I'm driving back, and I'm like, God, what is that smell? Like, that's not like, this isn't your normal office garbage smell. This is something different. Because apparently, someone either in that facility or near it runs a daycare. Uh, and they're probably using their dumpster. It was, uh, so it was bad, right? So I'm like, okay, just get through this. And yeah, I like, huck the bag back into the dumpster. It catches on a piece of metal, shreds the bag open. <laughs> I'm gonna make myself throw up, so I'm just gonna keep going. All right. Um, wow, did I really just blow through like 90 slides already? All right, so a couple quick stories since uh, we still got some time. There's come at me, bro. All right, um, come at me, bro is kind of actually the situation that you always want to see as a physical security tester because although I love getting in, what ultimately matters is that you're testing a company's preparedness to uh, react in these types of situations. Um, so this was after the courier thing. Uh, and I think that eventually they realized when they found all the DVDs that I had laid around the facility that they were being targeted. Uh, this is the next night after I decided, well, you know, I'm going to make one last go of it just, just, just because I've got time before the airport. Um, and so there was two doors, there was perimeter doors with an RFID badge, which I didn't have. And it was a small enough company that uh, I, I couldn't fake a badge. They would know it wasn't, it wasn't legit. So I'm like, hell with it. I'm just going to tailgate. Um, bro, our, uh, the hero of our story, he's going into the building. He, he, he badges in. And the first door, there's like a time gap between when it closes all the way and when he's through the next door. So I'm like, all right, well, if I just chill, pretend to be on my phone, um, when he goes through, I'm gonna bink, lean back, grab it, and then slide in, and then I'm, then I'm in the building. Well, come at me, bro, knew I was there. Uh, and so he goes through the door, I reach forward to grab it, he turns around, slams the door, grabs it, just throws it shut, and then does me a Jersey Shore. He's like, what? Come at me, bro. And I'm just like, that's, that's never happened. That's good, man, good on you. Like, I gotta go. I'm, I've been made. Um, so that was, that was a good experience. And ultimately, that's what I wanna see every time. But unfortunately, it almost never, ever happens. Typically, what happens is they open the door for you and then I take my ravioli into their break room and I use their microwave. Uh, and then I hang out there and uh, you know they get used to me. So here's one that I'm pretty sure Eric can, uh, can appreciate. I'm calling it picking on tilt. And when you're playing poker and you're, you're on tilt, you're frustrated, someone's in your head and you're just playing like crap, that's on tilt, right? Well, it's 4 a.m., you haven't slept, you ate at 7-Eleven, you're trying to pick the locks, um, you're on tilt at this point. This lock has owned you. Um, I you know, finally just slowed down, realized that there was an extra pain in the back of it I didn't know about, like use the force. 
And I got it, and I picked it, and it's so good when the thing turns and it latches. I'm like, yes, all the way, 180 rotations, perfect. And then I pull on the door, like, victory. And it moved less than it did before. Because I'd actually just locked the door again. Uh, and that they weren't even using that as a lock. Like, they had, like, the magnetic sensor at the top. Uh, so I had basically wasted all that time. Um, so basically, situational awareness, I guess. Uh, make sure the lock you're picking is actually locked before you pick it. Ceiling cat is, um, it's a quickie, you know. A lot of times it seems really easy, like you're just gonna go, oh, that ceiling isn't completed. I'm just gonna go over the drywall and into the locked area and it's no problem. Well, number one, that shit's fucking hard. All right, like trying to climb up there, especially with only one person, um, I don't recommend it, but I did. I ended up getting up in the ceiling and all I could think about is, I'm pretty sure these are not made to hold me up. Uh, so like whatever, you're like finding metal pipes and shit to grab onto, you know, something to, to, to not fall to your death on an engagement because the get out of jail free letter does not cover that. And I'm not even sure that my health insurance does. Um, they get up there and there's a firewall. And I don't mean an ethernet device. I mean a wall for stopping fires from spreading through the vehicle. So in the ceiling now, I'm like, great. Well, if I had brought a camera that, that I would have had to climb up there, but um, ended up having to go back down and, and start all over again. So, you know, it sounds like a good idea, but I don't really recommend it. Um, and then there's man trap fail. And the title is fairly self-explanatory, but we were on an engagement and I found the smoking section, because you know, that's what you do. Uh, but what I didn't realize at the time was that the door, it was a revolving door, was actually a man trap. And I'm like, well, hell with it. No guts, no glory, right? And I waited and I picked out my target and they weren't aware and I like snuck right in behind them and I was very careful to not get too close, but close enough to where I get inside. And then so I'm like, yes, I'm in. She didn't stop me. And then the man trap door closes and catches on my backpack. So a couple things happened at that point. Uh, the door stopped. She slammed face forward into the glass. I slammed into her. The alarms are going off now. And then the door reverses and spits us both back out. So then she goes crashing backwards into me. And uh, at that point, I think it's fairly safe to say that uh, I was detected. So I'm like, I, I let the client know, I'm like, yeah, you know, these alarms are going off. You probably know, yes, that was me. And he's like, oh, cool. What about the other door? And I'm like, oh yeah, you know, the doors, the, the, the other doors, what, what other doors? He was like, that entrance. And I'm like, okay, BRB. Um, and I walked in and then there was a guard and I'm like, hey, just walked right past. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who are you? I'm like, I'm here, I'm up from this other office. I'm late, I'm late for a meeting, I gotta go. He's like, let me see your badge. And I hold up a blank RFID badge. And I'm like, this is a temp. Like I just drove up here for this meeting, come on, I'm late. Who are you here to see? And I'm like, hold on, I have his number, LinkedIn.com. Uh, oh, it's this guy. And, and so she looked me up in the database and obviously I wasn't there. My name, I knew it wouldn't be and I gave her my real name because I assumed that she may ask to see my driver's license or some sort of identification. Of course it's not there, of, of course. They said they fixed that, right? You just get a little bit angrier. And then finally it's like, well, who are you here to see? And this person, oh yeah, they work here, go on back. Okay, thanks. Um, so that was good. Um, I guess we've got plenty of time for, uh, for, for questions. Yeah, you know, I thought 90 slides would have would taken a little bit longer. Sure. So I guess, I guess real fast, pack light. Pa take only what you need to survive. Uh, keep it simple because it's gonna fail, uh, so be adaptable. I, can't, I cannot overstress the importance of going online first and, and do your, your open source intelligence. I mean, at the very least, know who you're pretending to be there to see. Know what type of environment and culture they have. Uh, sleep. Seriously, sleep. Uh, and don't eat crap. I'm going to do it again. I'm, I'm still going to eat crap. And always, always remember the gloves. <laughs> all right, questions? I mean, I'm sure I could all figure a story out or something. Causes first. Besides the uh, suggested items, uh, binoculars, lockpicks, what other tools do you use in the field? Um, so I use duct tape a lot, um, and I alluded to that before, but what's cool is if you watch a facility, especially a shared facility, we started to figure out pretty early on that there was a lot of people leaving and they had side doors, that we just put a piece of duct tape over the strike plate and came back later. We just waited for everyone to leave and then we opened the door. And so I didn't even have to pick the locks on that one. So duct tape's super important. You know, I always bring my, my pwn plug and I always bring all this, these things that I know if I don't bring them, I'm gonna need them, but uh, it's, it's never, I've never needed those to actually get in and persist. 
Uh, Eric was next. Dongs? Hugs? You gotta bring hugs. They love hugs. Yeah. I'm sorry? The gloves. Well, uh, a big part of what I do is unfortunately picking through trash. Uh, and sometimes those trash contain very many loaded diapers. Um, I also learned that trip that sometimes it's easier just to go buy clothes you don't ever want to see again at Walmart for 10 bucks. Um, but the gloves, you know, either way, I mean, you, if you, if you want to be like Super James Bond, you're like, oh, so I don't leave fingerprints, muha. Uh, that doesn't matter in a, in a red team assessment. I mean, well, it might, depending on your engagement, but it's never mattered to us because we weren't trying to prove that we were never there. Uh, I've never seen an insurance company with a CSI department to, to make that really a thing. So yeah, it's poop. It's to, to not get poop on your hands. Uh, that's basically, that's what it is. Dan. Yeah, so the question was, after uh, my Proxmark fails, and there are several of them, have I looked into tweaking the Proxmark to get better range? Um, I've looked into it a little bit, and it's all about being lazy uh, and, and working a lot. But um, there are devices that you can make that'll have uh, specifically a HID reader that has about quadruple that read range. So you just have to get reasonably close instead of sexual harassment close, um, which is, yeah, it's, uh, it's on the list. But um, what I did end up doing, though, was there's a new firmware that allows you to, do, to write rewritable uh, cards in the field. So it, what makes more sense is realistically, if you have access to somebody's desk for just a quick moment, that all, that's all you need to do is to duplicate it. Um, and the nice thing about that is that if there's a power failure event uh, and you, you lose power to your Proxmark, normally those aren't stored in non-volatile RAM. That's going to get erased. So rewriting is better. Uh, but that said, 60% of the time, Kinko's works every time. Ian, question. Um, how often do you try to go through not the door, like the roof or like a window or something? Oh, uh, so he, the question was how often do I go through not the door? Um, loading docks and parking lots, but those still count as doors. Through the roof, almost never. I mean, you saw, um, the, God, um, boondock saints with the rope. I kind of imagine that would happen, <laughs> except that it, instead of it being awesome, I would probably die uh, and hang myself inadvertently. Terrence. What is the most interesting thing you found in the garbage? <laughs> Def the question is, what is the most interesting thing I found in the garbage? And I mean, I guess that depends on your definition of interesting. Um, <laughs> you know my definition. <laughs> <laughs> Those types of things I can't say, because this is being recorded. No, um, a lot more passwords than you would expect. Uh, a lot of screenshots, you know, you're, you're, stupid stuff. Um, and diapers. The question was, have I ever had an assessment that allowed destructive entry? We've had clients who said, surprise me. And I know what surprise me means. That means, we no, don't do that. Um, because, and what I found out before is the person who is your point of contact in running the engagement may have some ideas of how they want things to go. Like, yeah, go ahead, pick the lock on the CEO's desk. That's fine. I want to know if he's got passwords in there in clear text. And then you do it, and he does, and suddenly there's, you know, everyone's bosses are on a phone call. Uh, and they're not, they're not happy. Um, Dan, sorry, I'll come back. So do you consider it cheating if you get busted, except you tell the dude that busted you, hi, I'm Dan, I'm here actually to own you, I'm legitimately here, and the dude um, offers to help you continue uh, doing your own. So audience. that's a good question. Um, do, I, do I tell them straight up that I'm there for security assessments? I don't know, I've never been like, actually caught, like I've never had to present the get out of jail free letter. Um, and there, there's, some, there's some ideas that you give them a fake one first and see if they verify that. Maybe, so, maybe cause is on the other end of the phone number. Are they actually verifying that? But to me, like at that point, you've sort of blown the trust that you might have had with them, and you're looking more likely at a night in the, in the, in the jail. Uh, and I wouldn't do so well in the jail. I like hugs, but so not my, my in jail. So my last big engagement, I did that. I, got, I walked in with my MacBook. I have a 17-inch MacBook, and I walked in holding it like a tray, and the dude was like, what are you doing? And I said, I'm doing a wireless assessment. And he goes, okay, cool, let me show you the break room. And I went, uh, okay. Yeah, that, that shouldn't work. Kaz, <laughs> you had a question? Yeah. Uh, so when you're doing your assessments and you're expected to climb in the ceilings of... Oh. <laughs> All 
Right. So, so when you are actually expected to climb in the ceilings or scale the, the, the roof or whatever, um, in terms of like self-preservation, like does ins is insurance with your company cover all that sort of stuff? Like is that brought into attention of your uh, client that you may die on the assessment? So I, I try not to get into assessments that I might die, and so far that's actually worked out fairly well for me. Um, and, the, and I don't know. I hope to never know. Uh, I, 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 I've hurt myself before, but not, not that badly yet. Um, but there's time. I've, I haven't been doing this for a very long time, and the odds are against me. Um, there was one, one quick story. Uh, but you do see companies doing things right. You know, every now and then I'll go, uh, I went had an assessment where I, I walked in, it was an insurance company, I'm like, where do I go to make a claim? And they're like, you need to go outside and around the door. I'm like, cool, can I use the bathroom? Sure. You know, pass the secure area, they walk you into the bathroom. That's when I started going into the ceiling, and like, I was standing up on the toilet and sort of like looking over, and I'm like, cool, yeah, that, this might actually work out. And then somebody came in to the bathroom, and I'm in a stall, and I, like you can see from the door that I am like literally climbing into the ceiling. Like the stall does not cover that. I, they, that wasn't an intended use case. So I'm like, all right, well, that's not going to work. So I leave, and okay, ready, be right. And the guard was there, and he's like, are you done? Yeah, cool, good on you, man. That's awesome. So we, you know, own them otherwise. Yeah, Kaz got another question. How, when you're doing your assessments, how often does the um, electronic vector come in? Like, can you, uh, how often do you own this security system to let yourself in at night? So, we had one engagement at my previous company. It's funny you ask about that. Um, where we were able to do a malicious media drop, which then allowed us into a system that we then uh, used the built-in application for the RFID systems to let us in. And we just walked in. And it was really cool. Uh, we were sitting in the parking lot. We weren't sure it was going to work. One of the testers was uh, on his laptop in the car, tethered over his phone to a, a interpreter session in San Jose that was actually from a host in, uh, in another country and then back into the facility that we were sitting in the parking lot. And uh, 11.59, tick, tick, hits midnight. So it goes from a steady red light to red, green, red, green. And we just look at each other and we're, and we're like, well, that happened. And then, you know, get in there. And um, if, if you haven't figured it out yet, it's cause. Um, so speaking of things you shouldn't do, yeah. Uh, we're, like, the other tester and I were uh, very diligent about getting in and getting out in a short period of time. We had the little U3 USB switchblades with the payloads on them. And every computer we could see, just bam, 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 just, just infecting them. Like, OK, we're good on time. Let's go. Uh, grab, that, grab that laptop. Grab those prototypes. Let's go. Ready? Yes, five minutes. Cool, where's cause? Where's cause? And we're like, oh, fuck. Uh, there's this part of the lab that's like, nobody in this area without the clean suit. And I'm like, I don't know what they have back there. And I'm like, I'm like, do I go in there? Do I not? Come on, time's running. I really don't want to get in trouble or break something or get you know, airborne um, HIV or something. I don't know, like something crazy, right? And then and there's cause. And he's like, if I recall correctly, he's hiding down underneath what I believe was an electron microscope, um, trying to find the USB port. He's like, where's the damn USB port? And, and I'm like, cause, that's Solaris. This payload's not gonna work. And so eventually we ended up grabbing him and going out, uh, and we left, and the janitor kind of looked at us, and you know, we left, and we locked everything, and that was cool. That was a serious question, though. Have you ever come across anything where you actually got in by a virtual ethic? <laughs> that's not that use case. The question was, you didn't, you didn't answer my question. Um, yeah, like war dialing is still a thing. Um, do it intelligently. Like if you have an idea of what the phone blocks are, especially with analog landlines, which usually is what war dialing is going to get, um, you can get really inexpensive caller ID service for asterisk boxes for about 10 cents a lookup. So what I do is, you know, just throw a bash script together, um, r run through a list of phone numbers, and it'll usually be associated with the company. Uh, and you can tell uh, by calling it whether or not it's a PBX. And if it's a PBX, a public branch exchange switch, uh, they're less likely to have an analog system if it's voice over IP, et cetera. Um, but yeah, almost never, to answer your question, the long way. Um, because phishing, like Valerie said, it just, it doesn't ever not work. It's, it's like, it always works. Uh, or like, you'll, you'll, you'll get in through like an Outlook web uh, access portal, and you'll read somebody's email, and it's great because from there, like, when you're phishing as an employee that you've already compromised, then your success rate goes up even higher. You go from a 10% response rate on phishing attacks to something 80, 90%, you know, almost all the time. Uh, 
What's great is then you'll get the response from the IT department, hopefully, who said, hey, this is a phishing link. Don't click it. And then um, because OA maps it as an IMAP server, I'm watching the drafts mail suddenly pop open in OA. And you like three characters at a time, I could see an email that this person was writing in response to that phishing. It's like, don't worry, I didn't click it. I got the mail. No problems as I'm reading it from her email account. So um, that, was, <laughs> that was an interesting debrief call. Um, for live. Any other questions? I'll give you guys some time back. Uh, maybe have some beer. You want to sing a song? Oh, stories. Yeah, you can have some beer. Stories, yeah. Just a story? You ever mess around with the VoIP system? Yeah, yeah, VoIP system sweet. Um, especially because you can typically set caller ID trivially once you're administrator of the voicemail system. And then if you. Okay, yeah, I still have 10 minutes. So a lot of tricks that you can do with, uh, with the phone systems would be to find a voicemail box or redirect a voicemail box. Um, so that you can fish people internally, and they're more likely to answer the phone uh, if it's internal than external. And if not, you're like, look, uh, I need you to change your password. Leave a voicemail for me and tell me what it is so I can update you on the system. And that, that works pretty often. Um, but what's really interesting is, and I talked about this briefly at Bayfret last year, is now what we're seeing with VoIP systems is convergence. So in addition to having the phone system, uh, there's like an, uh, an online instant messenger integrates into that, and they'll have a sort of like WebEx style slide deck upload functionality. Well, that data is important, and if you think about the types of slides that are going to be transmitted on an internal phone system, it's usually you know, classified or, or, or sensitive. Uh, and that's the data that never gets groomed. When, when voicemails are, are overfilling the size of the inbox uh, on, on the voice system, voicemails go first. And then in order of importance, the, the PDFs, et cetera, are the last things to get groomed off. And, and then you've got call data, call, call data records. So you know, uh, I know that you call this person uh, from Craigslist uh, at roughly 11 p.m. every Thursday. And then he comes over and you guys leave. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah, the voice call. So what's cool is um, like uh, Cisco's Unity product, it will email you MP3s of the calls. And so it's really fun when sis they have that system and to watch uh, phishing campaigns in real time. Like once you start emailing from internal email accounts, uh, then you get voicemail start to come by, like quick call me right away, like blah, blah, blah. And then you I am back like, sorry, can't, no, you know, BRB. Um, yeah, phone systems are fun. OK, well, I, I guess you guys are going to get five minutes back. Um, Let's, let's drink. Thanks, everybody. Hey, guys. So this wraps up. Hey, sorry. So this wraps it up for the day. Uh, there are a couple of things I wanted to ask you to do. Um, actually, beg you to do. There's a lot of swag left, so please take it. Because the more you take, the less I have to carry back. <laughs> so then the next thing is, um, we also have all of them. Oh man, he's gifted. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, anyway. So the next thing is, um, there are a lot of DVDs printed with the different uh, talks. So see uh, the video guys at the end, uh, at the back, and just uh, you know, if you want to pick up something, you know, work with them, and that's it. So, swag, videos, swag, videos, and also last call for tickets. Literally, you have five minutes to dispense of all of your tickets. Five minutes. Thank you, guys. We'll see you at 5:30 at Pure. We're going to rage it.